Critic here, and today I just want to talk about uh, the new Marvel film that just came out just yesterday, uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. You know, Bandit Cumberbatch, Elizabeth Olsen as, you know, the Scarlet Witch, aka Wanda Maximoff. It's basically, it's basically a t continuation of the Multiverse era, which we just came from with Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, the thing I can say is, it's a surprise, but not a surprise at the same time. As y'all know, this movie just deals with the multiverse, uh, going through different dimensions, seeing different characters, and Doctor Strange gotta find a way to handle it, man. <laughs> he just can't stay away from the multiverse, dog. He, he's busy trying to fix everything. So we see the multiverse before with Loki, like I said, Spider-Man No Way Home. We've seen it a little bit in Infinity War, which is just like a sneak peek or whatever. So, um, when it comes to surprises and uh, no surprises, I would say that the most surprise with this film is the way Marvel just let Sam Raimi do what he wants. Now, Sam Raimi is directing this film. As y'all know, Sam Raimi directed three of the, Spire, three of the original Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films, which I thought were horrible. Good. No, the first two films are great. The third film, it's like a guilty pleasure. It just depends on how you feel about the movie. But anyways, Sam Raimi has a distinct direction where it it ele it's elements of horror. It's just the goofy stuff, basically corny stuff he does, which is great for him. And they let him do that. They let him direct. They let him like use certain angles for the camera certain transitions they usually do. Like there, I remember one transition from Spider-Man where he's just drawing, creating his costume. Like those type of transitions, if you know what I'm talking about. And they let him do his thing, man, because those that, that was the biggest highlight of this film is his direction. Because it looked different than any other Marvel film I've watched so far. I mean, we have distinct movies before, but they never let a director like be into their project like that and I'm truly grateful that they let Sam Raimi do that because I, I didn't if they were gonna get Sam Raimi I don't want I, I don't want him to be there and not put his uh mark in his direction in this film because then you're just wasting his time but they didn't do that they let him do his thing and I don't know if you're gonna like it or not but that's just how it is he he embraces corny cheese he embraces all that Cause y'all know he done Evil Dead, the Evil Dead franchise and all that. So I'm um, that that was that was a surprise for me. Also, uh, how much fun this film is. Like before uh, these other Marvel, well, before Spider-Man No Way Home, and after Infinity War. Well, yeah, Endgame. Yeah, after Endgame, I was just like, you know, I'm kind of done with Marvel. Uh, seeing what I want to see, all the characters that I like are gone. They basically, they basically go into this Naruto phase where, as y'all know, Naruto, the original, had his arc and ended, and then there was just some new side characters and some new stuff that, you know, younger people will be able to relate to. And Marvel is in that Naruto stage. Now, we see America Chavez, and America Chavez, she was cool. I really like, I really like her. She was. She was likable. She has great amounts of power using the multiverse. And then we have uh, Wanda. Wanda. Wanda is a savage, bro. Like, if y'all watch this film, she was the highlight character in this film. She was Omni Man levels of dangerous. If you if there's a specific scene, I'm not spoiling. This is no spoilers. Don't worry where it's reminiscent to the first episode of Invincible. If you know what I'm talking, if you've seen this film, you know what I'm talking about, man. It was just brutal. This film was so brutal, so terrifying. I mean, it's not like, like people, you, you know how critics, they'd be like, oh my God, this was really brutal and terrifying. And you're just like, man, they just talk, just talk. For a PG-13 film, it was really brutal. <laughs> Especially if you if you notice what I'm talking about. 
they they let him do that, yeah. And it was just crazy, man. Wanda, Wanda was just scary here. She was really threatening. She was probably the most threatening villain since Thanos, to be honest. And it, for the no surprises, there are cameos here. That's all I say. And they were they were great, but at the same time, it's like, damn, you kind of let them down a little bit. You know, and I don't want to get into it more because I'll end up spoiling the film. I'm trying as best as I can not to say anything wild that will get y'all mad at me. So, yeah, there are cameos and they were, they were really great, man. I really enjoyed it. The music was good. It was from Danny Elfman. Now, sometimes Danny Elfman is, is like up and down because you have Spider-Man and, and Batman, you know, Batman 1989, and then you have stuff like Justice League, which is just which is just mid but here it was really good you know lots of electric uh viol electric uh guitar uh violins all that it's pretty good uh score uh i think the thing that like this movie is good in my opinion i truly enjoy it but i understand why other folks don't really find entertainment with this because the plot like it's simple, but you don't really care for it. There's, there's not really, it's not, it's, it doesn't entice you. It doesn't like hook you in. Like this is basically, this is a roller coaster. Like most of the Marvel films, you go for the ride. You don't know where it's turning or not, but you know you're gonna have fun. And here I had fun. I didn't care, you know, continuity issues. I didn't care, to be honest, about. About uh, if it's deep or not. All I care about was did I have fun, and I did with this film. But there's what there was one interesting theme here, which is about being happy. Now you think these heroes would be happy, having superpowers, saving the world, getting credit, people knowing who you are. But Doctor Strange, he had to question himself if he's, if he's really happy or not. And that's all I can say about that. Uh, plot because I don't want to spoil the film like I said so Dr. Strings in the Multiverse of Madness is a really good time take your kids there I mean there there is some like brutal stuff that's happening in the film so I would recommend if your kids not like seven and up at least then I would probably either cover her or his eyes or don't even bring him at all because they will be traumatized seeing this movie because of the scary stuff that's here. And, you know, I would say if you haven't watched any of the Marvel films, then you probably will get really confused. If you haven't watched What If, if you haven't watched, you know, WandaVision, Loki, if you haven't watched any of the Disney Plus films or any of the Marvel films in the past, you will get confused and you probably get irritated by them. I had a good time here. And I would say that I would rate Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness uh, three out of five stars. It was a really good time. I had fun, good cameos, a great villain, uh, great camera work from Sam Raimi, uh, good acting from everyone here in this in this movie. I really enjoyed myself. So three out of five stars, I'll give it. Make sure you like this video, comment down below your thoughts on Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Tell me what you think. And no spoilers in the comments, please. It's the, the movie just came out. Chill out, please. Uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to be the first to see my new content. All right, y'all. Peace.